Hey, what's up, Buffy? To welcome back to my YouTube channel. Ah! I know it's been a long time coming, and sorry about last week. I didn't post a video because you know how life is going through a lot, trying to survive life, trying to survive everything and come back. But hey, if you're new to the channel, well, welcome. My name is Johnny J. Carlo. I'm a So. <laughs> So um, I decided to come back and give you this video. Like I said, the channel at the beginning is about uh, entertainment, life, and the unexpected. So you can take this video as one of those unexpected ones. And um, the reason I decided to do this video is because you know a lot of my friends who know me and are close to me, the likes of Yanella, Kolule, um, Godiva, etc. They know I love like murder cases and murder mysteries. So when you come to my house, my TV is always on the CBS reality, it's always on crime and investigation, etc. So it's something that I'm really, really interested uh, in. And um, so I decided, you know what, um, the channel is about, you know, also doing story times about my personal life. And why not do stories about the top 10 um, uh, notorious serial killers in South Africa and this was also inspired by the well-known youtuber that is Bailey Syrian and she also does murder mystery stories in the United States etc so I decided to bring it home a little bit so the other thing is that with us here in South Africa there isn't a lot of information about the case about the victims etc so I normally just you know depend on reliable uh, sources as well as articles etc to put everything together for you so if you're a meta mystery person or you like solving crimes or you're interested in those type of things well you are at the right place because this first story is for you and for just for disclaimer purposes definitely um this is not me trying to promote serial killing or me being sensitive to the victims or the families of the victims this is just me just telling the story the way it is you might have heard uh these people's names being mentioned by friends or family in a conversation etc and you're just like i know nothing about those people well those things also happen or happened in south africa was also still happening and i decided you know what this is a good time to sort of like share the information with you guys with some of the top 10 notorious serial killers in South Africa so we're about to get into it while I'm doing this what I'm gonna be doing is that I'm gonna be doing my nails because I'm afraid to go out and go do my nails out so I have my hand steaming machine here I have my water I have my kit I also have my girl brutal fruit <laughs> So, let's get into the gig. Alright, so I'm going to be telling you about this guy. The story is very short. There isn't much information that is out there. So, I decided I did a whole lot of research. I listened to a whole lot of podcasts. I watched a whole lot of uh, documentaries as well to sort of like find more information about him and what really, really happened. So, basically, I'm going to be giving you the background about the serial killer as well as... Um, actually what went down you know so uh the first serial killer in no particular order that we're going to be talking about is none other than eliphas musomi aka the Dokoloshi killer aka the ex killer so this is what happened with eliphas musomi so eliphas musomi was born in 1910 in kwazulu natal russia in south africa and he was raised by his mother and father but most of the information regarding the parents and if they were siblings or not nothing is actually available on record but looks like from what i got from my research is that musomi was heavily influenced by his dad no information about the mother the birth or the birth date we know that he was just born in 1910 so, while he grew up, Musoni then uh, got a calling for becoming a Sangoma. So, in order to get assistance with that, he then decided to go to another Sangoma who will assist him in becoming a mature uh, Sangoma, etc. So then, Musomi uh, apparently got inhabited 
by a tokoloshi. Now, for those that do not know what a tokoloshi is, it's a mystical creature that um, is normally used to bewitch people or it will control you and give you instructions on what to do, etc. In the case of Oedipus Musori. Now, what happened was, in August of 1953, that's when Oedipus embarked under the instruction of this Tokoloshi, embarked on an 18-month killing spree in the southern part of KwaZulu-Natal. Now, Musomi's first killing was when he decided, why is this thing not working? I'm trying to steam my hands. So, where was I? Let's get back into the story. So then, Musomi's first killing was when he raped a young woman and killed her in front of her mistress and then stored that young woman's blood in a bottle. Now, the mistress, of course, in this case was terrified. Everybody would be terrified. I would be crying and terrified. But it looks like the mistress had strength enough to go and tell the police and then the police were well the police then arrested Umsomi for the first time. But then it looks like soon after that Musomi escaped prison and when she was arrested the next time he had the almighty power of the Tokoloji to thank for his best escape. So what happened is that after then, Musomi was then released for what? I don't know. Uh, what happened was that he then went to kill five young children. And then he was arrested again for that. But for some reason, he escaped again. In my head, I'm just thinking, are you guys arresting Musomi and just putting him in a mall or a complex where he can just walk? Whenever walk out whenever he wants or bed in sun. What was going on? Like, honestly speaking. So it was alleged that Musomi's victims were not only women, but it was also men and young children. So what he would do, he would lure them by telling them that he is a doctor and he will give them healing, etc. Only to then end up ending their lives by bashing them with an ex. I love murder mysteries, etc. But researching this was actually really 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 hard after f killing the five young children remember Musomi was then arrested and then he escaped prison again under the powers of the Stokoloshi to then keep on killing more people luckily Musomi was then arrested for petty crimes months later and it was alleged that the items that he had with him were those of the victims. Now, I know I've been, I kept on mentioning that the southern part of KwaZulu-Natal and you're probably asking yourself which part of the southern part of KwaZulu-Natal. So apparently most of the killings that Eliphaz Musomi uh, um, sort of like executed were in, I have to look at, look at it, is Unkomas as well as Umsiguku, Umsiguku valleys in the Natal. So it is alleged that Mo, uh, Musomi killed over 15 people and there might be more victims that he didn't want to reveal to the police. Now, Musomi was then finally arrested in 1955. So you can imagine from 1953 to 1955, this man killed over 15 people, if, if that is even the right number. <laughs> you 
no reason does this happen in, in other parts of the world and not your world, but it definitely happened here. Now, during his trial in 1955, Edifice Musomi I went in front of the judge to say it was definitely not his fault. It was actually the fault of the Dokolosi and he was just a conduit. Conduit. Put it that way. So basically like a demonic possession type of thing going on. I don't know. So apparently two psychologists actually disagreed with Musomi uh, during his trial and they were like he actually takes pleasure from inflicting pain on other people. But now on the 10th of Feb 1956 Musomi was sentenced to death by hanging at the Victoria Central uh, Prison. Now, upon request, it was said that nine Zulu chiefs, as well as elders, were actually present at the hanging of Musomi just to see and witness the fact that he is actually dead. But one of the elders was like, Musomi will resurrect as a Dokonoshi. A very short story, but Musomi did so much damage only from 1953 to 1955, and in 1956, that's when Musomi was executed. I'm very interested in seeing did he really come back as a dog or not? Like I said, the story is very short because there isn't much information that is out there. But this is what I could find in terms of watching documentaries, listening to podcasts, etc. And that is the story of Eliphas Musomi, aka the X killer, aka the Tokoloshi killer. Let me know what you think down below. Make sure that you comment. I'm still steaming my hands right here so that I can file them nicely. So let me know what you think. Do you want me to continue with such stories or do you find them creepy? Well, I will still continue telling you because I said top 10 and I only mentioned one person. But let me know what you think. Make sure that you like, subscribe. Like I said, this channel is where you can expect entertainment live in the unexpected. From me, Johnny J. Carlo Casanasitala. So, bye bye.